Is a and a top five team for 2022? That and more on this episode of Locked On Aggies Podcast. You are Locked On Aggies, your daily podcast on the Texas A&M Aggies. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Locked On Aggies, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I am your host, Joey Ikes. Thank you, as always, for making us your first listen of the day. Every day, we are free and available wherever you get your podcast, and it is preseason rankings season. Yes, that's right, preseason ranking season. That means over the course of the next several weeks, we will see plenty of lists. Top 25s, top 10s, top 5s. Between now and when AM kicks off the 2022 college football season against Sam Houston State on September 3rd at Kyle Field. <clears throat> this week, one of the great institutions of college sports media, and sports media really, Lindy's, which has been around since 1982, producing their magazine content, put their preseason magazine on stands this week. And in that, we have a look at their top 25 rankings. So right now we're going to look through their top 10. We're going to see where AM falls on that list. You can see the list. I have it broken down at aggieswire.usatoday.com. Let's see what the list is. Let's have some takes. Number 10, Oklahoma. Okay, number nine, Oklahoma State. Okay, Notre Dame, eight, number seven, Utah, number six, Michigan. So as you see, we're we're now reached the point where we're at the top five. We still haven't said Texas A&M. So either Lindy's holds A&M in very high regard for the 2022 season, or they hold them in not very high regard at all. They're not really sitting in the middle ground in any way on AM. And I think it's interesting that we'll, we'll get to here as we get a little further in where they have AM slotted. So here we get to number five, and that is where we find Texas AM, the fight in Texas Aggies. Whoop. But then number four is Clemson, which is interesting to me. Um, Number three is Georgia. Two is Ohio State. Number one is Alabama. And it's it's interesting to me because, you know, number one, Alabama, you know, Nick Saban, quarterback Bryce Young, Heisman Trophy winner, all that kind of stuff. Understandable for them to be number one. Number two, Ohio State, C.J. Stroud, Ryan Day, perennial contenders, that wide receiver core, They're going to be really good. Number two, okay, makes sense. Georgia comes off the amazing national championship run, sends 45 players to the NFL in the NFL draft, and then returns their starting quarterback, Stetson Bennett, who we believe will be the starting quarterback. We will see for sure once camp rolls around. But either way, they're returning the starting quarterback that carried them to the national championship game last year. He wasn't their starting quarterback at the start of the season, But the change was made quickly, became the starting quarterback. Georgia goes on to win in the national championship. And maybe, just maybe, there's a lesson in there that uh, Jimbo Fisher can can learn from. But then we get to Clemson. And Clemson at number four, maybe, maybe we're picking nits here, but... The Clemson quarterback, and I'm probably going to butcher his last name. I'm going to give it my best shot. DJ Uyangulele was a very highly thought of quarterback going into last season because of the way he played when Trevor Lawrence was out in 2022. But his play didn't live up to that in 2021. And you could argue that he was one of the biggest reasons or, or his play in that offense's play was one of the reasons why they didn't succeed at a high level in 2021. They lose their defensive coordinator, Brent Venables, to the number 10 team on this list, Oklahoma. 
And yet here they are at number four. Maybe Lindy's just holds the recruits that comes and brings in on an annual basis at a very high um, level. Maybe they just say, hey, Clemson's going to run roughshod through the ACC. They're going to wind up in a really high ranking. They're a big known name program. We feel like let's put them up there at the top. We know they're going to be pretty good. They're going to win lots of games, even if they're not real-life national championship contenders. We won't look that bad if the quarterback doesn't play that well and they wind up 10th in the country instead of 4th. And then A&M. A&M, is the, A&M and Clemson are the first couple of schools in this that really have quarterback questions, right? And, you know, Georgia to a certain extent, yes, but like I said, they're, they're returning their, the starting quarterback that won the national championship game last year. They are in a, a great position from a quarterback standpoint. If they can upgrade from that, great. But that's the baseline. That's the floor, and that's a great place for them to be. But for Clemson, with, with DJ and with Texas A&M, and their three options at starting quarterback, you know, Max Johnson, the LSU transfer, Haynes King, the incumbent starter who got hurt very early in the second game of the season, didn't really have an opportunity to show what he could be as the starting quarterback. And then Connor Wigman, who is the five-star big recruit who came in this year in the class of 2022, true freshman. We will see how much trust Jimbo Fisher has in the true freshman and the young player um, pretty quickly, I think. It won't take very long. Um, but they have the quarterback question, and that question – is really what we have to, to figure out the answer to to know what this AM team is going to be. They could be this top five team. They could be better than Clemson and be the top four team. They could learn the lesson from Georgia, make a quarterback choice coming out of camp, realize very early on it's the wrong choice and pivot from that choice, pick the right guy, everything clicks, and away they go, and they're on a huge trajectory We will have to see how that plays out. But really, the quarterback question is the question. One interesting um, omission from this list, and maybe this is some uncertainty from Lindy's at at this point in time, USC is not listed on this list, which um, when you look at some some betting odds from our friends at Bet Online, USC is up there in in the top four or five in terms of favorites to win the national championship. So we will see how that plays out. We will see how AM chooses their uh, their quarterback and what the implications of that are. Um, we talked about Lindy's. We're going to talk about maybe an even bigger media institution when it comes to college football, and that is Phil Steele. Um, we'll talk about him in just a moment. But first, I get to tell you guys about Built Bar. And I told you about this last time. Mud pie, guys. Mud pie. Yes, that's right. Chocolate, whipped cream, chocolate mousse, covered in real chocolate, cookies and cream crumble. Oh, I know you guys are like me. You like your sweets. Get your mud pie. It's only available for a limited time. Visit built.com. Luckily, if you're not convinced yet, just because of how delicious it is, you're not going to believe this. Low calories, high protein, low sugar. That's right, 16 grams of protein, 150 calories, only 8 grams of sugar. It's like your mom made the most delicious, amazing chocolate cream mud pie, wrapped it up just for you, and made it healthy. That's right, mud pie bars and puffs are available at Built.com right now, but they're going fast because, like I said, they're delicious. Like all built bars, they're covered in 100% real chocolate. That means they're healthy and tasty. So, built bars are all made of collagen protein. Your body absorbs that protein more efficiently. Tons of health benefits. Eat something that is delicious and tastes good for you. Built.com. The offer code is LOCKED15. Chocolate mousse, whipped cream, cookies, and cream crumble. Stop drooling. Built.com right now. Mud pie bars. And puffs, you won't regret it. Lock 15 gets you 15% off at built.com. Okay. Now, if you have followed college football at all for any period of time, you know the name Phil, Phil Steele. 
That's a tough one. His preseason magazine is the absolute gold standard. This thing is a novel. This guy single-handedly writes these breakdowns on every single individual team. And he puts together preseason All-America teams, all that sort of stuff. That's what we're going to look at today. They're preseason All-America teams. We have three fighting Texas Aggies who made the cut. We will get to that list. But first, one live NBA draft show is absolutely not enough for us here at Locked On. The entire NBA channel, 30 shows plus Locked On NBA draft, big board, all going live on draft night. So if you have a favorite NBA team, make sure you subscribe right now to their Locked On YouTube channel so you get notified when they go live on NBA Draft Night. It's going to be a great night. Some really high-quality players coming into the league. Okay. Let's get to these Aggies on Phil Steele's preseason All-American list. It starts out with Big L, Layden Robinson, A&M's right guard, who is the second team All-American guard on Phil Steele's list. Now, Big L had an unbelievable year last year. According to Pro Football Focus, he had 622 snaps. 324 of those snaps were as a pass blocker. He allowed zero sacks. Zero sacks last year. 300 and 24 pass blocking snaps, zero sacks, only one quarterback hit, and eight quarterback hurries. 98.6% efficient as a pass blocker last year, according to PFF. And he had an 85 run block grade from Pro Football Focus. Take their grades how you will. We love the guys over at PFF. We have friends there. An 85 run block grade on nearly 300 running block snaps. That man is extremely important for Texas A&M as they go forward into the 2022 season. And he's going to be one of the best guards in college football. And he is going to be the anchor of what will be a pretty significantly remade offensive line. They're replacing the entire left side of the offensive line this year. Uh, Two guys gone to the NFL, Kenyon Green, first-round pick. Layden Robinson, Big L, is going to be a huge key part of the anchor of that offensive line as they look to build the infrastructure for whoever the quarterback is that Jimbo Fisher puts in place. Okay, the next All-American, according to Phil Steele, Anaya Smith. Agent Zero, third team wide receiver. When you think about some of the wide receivers out there in college football right now, um, being third team is not in any way, shape, or form a slight towards Anaya Smith, especially when you consider the fact that so much of his value, so much of who he is as a player doesn't come in traditional wide receiver things. So it's not going to be reflected necessarily in the wide receiver pass catching numbers the way that some others might be. So Anai Smith, we all know what he does as a uh, as a receiver, as a runner, and what he does as a return man as well. We are extremely lucky to have Anai Smith with the Aggies. We are extremely lucky to have him back for the 2022 season. He chose to stay in school, to stay in Aggieland. We're extremely, extremely lucky to have him um I just can't express it enough. He is going to be an absolute key cog in this AM offense as we try to see this team push to heights that they have never, that they have yet to push to ever in the modern history of the football program. It's going to be great to see. The third member of the All American team for Phil Steele from Texas AM is Devin A. Chain. And he is, in what Phil Steele calls his all-purpose players, he is the fourth team player. Now, that's a big category to be a part of. 
um, return men, special teams guys, play some offense, all that kind of stuff. Devin A. Chain is a big play waiting to happen. We know the speed. We know the national championship contender track and field speed that comes with Devin A. Chain and the amount of opportunities he's going to get in 2022 compared to 2021 now that he is essentially the guy in the running back room there for AM with Isaiah Spiller moving on to the NFL as a, uh, as a draft pick of the Los Angeles Chargers. It's going to be awesome to see what Devin A. Chain does with those opportunities, and I am fully prepared to absolutely bask in the glory of the huge runs and the huge plays that he creates as that primary runner and the way he breaks the back of some of these opponents. Let's talk about some baseball. The Aggies eliminated Texas and Notre Dame in the course of the last few days to advance to the final four of the Men's College World Series in Omaha. I've been telling you guys how fun this team is to follow, and over the last couple of games, the last three days, they showed you exactly why. This team absolutely does not quit. Every single at bat is an adventure. (laughs) Every single at bat is a grind for their opponents, and they just wear people down. Nathan Detmer and Micah Dallas both pitched over the course of the last couple of days. Micah Dallas started on Sunday against Texas. Nathan Detmer started Tuesday against Notre Dame. They both pitched extremely well. Nathan Detmer went seven shutout innings against Notre Dame, which is huge for the staff for the rest of the tournament, which we'll talk about here in a moment. Trevor Werner has got to be the MVP of the last couple of games for AM. Big, huge at bat against Texas. Fouled off a bunch of pitches, bunch of pitches. Finally got his pitch to hit. RBI hit. Helped them get the helped them get the win against Texas. And then on Tuesday against Notre Dame goes two for four with a walk and a home run against Notre Dame. Absolute clutch, huge performances from the leadoff man at the top of the order. Now it's rematch time. Oklahoma sits ready and waiting. AM matches up with Oklahoma on Wednesday at 1 p.m. Central Time on ESPN. If the Aggies can avoid beating themselves, they absolutely have a great chance to push it to a winner-take-all bracket championship game in a third matchup against OU. This is a double elimination tournament bracket. So AM with one loss to OU already only has to lose one more game to be eliminated. They will have to beat OU twice in order to eliminate OU and advance to the final three-game series. The last time AM played Oklahoma. We're going to walk through a couple of really important innings and explain to you why if AM can control certain phases of the game, which are completely within their control, they can absolutely take out Oklahoma. The last time they played, it was one to nothing going into the top of the second inning. Oklahoma had runners reach base with a walk. This is in order. A walk, then a two-out hit by pitch, and then a single to load the bases. And then another walk with the bases loaded scored a run, followed by two more singles, and then a three-run home run. That's a walk, a hit-by-pitch, and another walk. The hit-by-pitch and the bases loaded walk with two outs. And by the end of that inning, it was 8-1. to one. If a ms pitchers can avoid giving free base runners to Oklahoma, make the hitters hit, put the ball in the strike zone, They can absolutely come out on top. Same story, second verse in the fourth inning. This time, it's fielding. First, bunt laid down down the first baseline. Now, I'm going to give the guy credit. It was a really good bunt. Hard enough down the line that the first baseman 
should have probably come forward to try to make the play. Probably should have been aggressive. It was hard enough. If he's aggressive to come and get it, he has an easier angle to field the ball coming to him and either tag the runner or get back to the base than the pitcher. That's not the bunt play that A&M had called, apparently. So pitcher Joseph Minifee comes flying over on a full sprint, tries to reach down and field it on the run with his glove, and at the same time, reach up and make a tag on the runner as he passes. Isn't able to execute, doesn't secure the ball because he's picking up a very slowly moving ball with his glove. Doesn't work out. Next batter squares around to bunt again. This time to sacrifice, maybe test the AM defense a little bit more. This time, Minifee makes a throwing error to first base, puts two men on. Next batter is a walk. Then the next batter is a first pitch grand slam. It's 12 to 3 at that point. The game is effectively over. At that point in the fourth inning, down 12 to 3, the game's effectively over. The comeback efforts were squashed on their own undoing. If AM can avoid those mistakes, and we've been saying it since we previewed the College World Series before it started, it's going to come down to AM's ability to avoid those mistakes, keep themselves in the game, and allow their bats in the way that that lineup just absolutely tortures opposing pitchers, allow that to put them in position to win the game. Guys, thanks so much for joining me today. You can find me on Twitter, at Joey Ikes. That is our show. You can read my writing about all things Texas A&M at aggieswire.usatoday.com. You can follow this show at Locked on Aggies, and please subscribe to the show on your podcast platform of choice. And we are on YouTube. Check out the YouTube channel, Locked on Aggies, as well. Be sure to subscribe, like, comment, share, hit the notification bell, rate and review the podcast. All of those things help. We're trying to grow this channel. We're trying to give the Texas A&M coverage that this athletics department, this football team, this baseball team, what Buzz Williams is doing with the basketball program, extremely exciting stuff going on at Texas A&M, and we are going to be there every step of the way. We hope you will join us. The first picks of the Ultimate NBA Mock Draft have been made. Go search now for the Ultimate NBA Mock Draft and get over 50 insiders, the Odyssey sports experts and draft experts of Locked On NBA Big Board. The five-episode Ultimate NBA Mock Draft is underway. Make Ultimate NBA Mock Draft your second listen today. We thank you very much for making us your first listen. We hope that you have a great day. Thank you so much.